a very good afternoon to everyone welcome you all to the department of english diamond harbor women's university today we are going to begin the ninth lecture of our lecture series this lecture will be delivered by professor shurobhi roy she is an assistant professor of the department of english of shidhu kanu birsha university today she will speak on everything is upside down over there invention of difference in amitabh ghosh's the shadow line now i invite our professor dr aparajita hajra madam to give a welcome address madam please okay thank you very much can you, uh, can you hear me because internet is dicey today on my yes. side it's acting up like anything yes ma'am okay yes. yeah so hello everyone out there on both sides of the screen uh today like malushri said uh, as a part of the lecture series that we organize in the department we have uh, shurobhi roy who will talk on amitabh ghosh now one reason for inviting her over was of course the ubiquitous presence of amitabh ghosh and his uh, fiction in the academic cur curriculum but more than that it was a wish to listen to shurobhi all because she is such a splendid speaker you know i have had the uh, uh, the wonderful experience of working with her in my previous workplace when i used to work in shidhukana bisha university and thus know her as a great human being too whose sweet tem tempered good naturedness uh, conditions her academic uh, personality so welcome to dhwu shurobhi my good old chutti over to you uh thank you. thank you so much ma'am thank you <laughs> so much for the lovely introduction um firstly i would like to thank uh, dr modhumita mojumdar the hod of the english department diamond harbor and women's university for so this kind of just a little uh, intervention we'll just have a small introduction to you before okay. we begin all right okay okay uh yes now i uh, request uh kumaraditya sarkar sir uh, please give uh, please introduce her thank you sir thank you malushi uh, today we have the pleasure of uh, hosting shubhi rai in the department of english taiwan english university shubhi rai is an assistant professor of english in the sidho kanu birsha university of india West Bengal, India, where she has been teaching uh, since the last three years. She is also pursuing her PhD in the Department of English in Vishwarathi University in Chandigarh, India, from where she was also awarded her MP in degree. And she graduated from Saint Stephen's College, Delhi, and completed her master's degree from the University of Delhi. Her essay has been published in an edited volume, Popular Narratives, Texts, and Contexts, in 2020. in the international journal iefor in 2022 her research interests include post colonial theory and literature popular fiction and sociology of the body uh, i would uh, welcome you once again uh, uh, professor roy and uh, you may please now uh, begin the talk i would not interfere much thank you very much <laughs> thank you thank you sir thank you for the kind introduction uh, i'm really overwhelmed by your all of your warmth uh, such a warm welcome uh, first again uh, i would really like to thank uh, dr mudhumita mujumdar the hod of the english department uh, diamond harbor women's university for this wonderful wonderful opportunity as well as all the other uh, faculty members and the organizers uh, and a special uh, thanks to oprajita ma'am uh, who has already mentioned that i joined Uh, you know when i joined the university in uh, shidhakanavisha university in 2019 she was the hod here and uh, so we have a, a long history and she has kind of been like the you know the north star who has helped me uh, navigate the troubled waters uh, of the professional as well as you know all kinds of 
in all, all areas of my life so far. Uh, I would therefore, uh, you know, uh, uh, express my sincerest gratitudes to uh, gratitude to all of you. And with that, I would like to begin, uh, uh, you know, without uh, much further ado, uh, uh, I'd like to begin presenting my paper. And uh, I have titled it as, as uh, I think, uh, Malushri already read out, everything is upside down over there, invention of difference in Amitabh Ghosh's The Shadow Lines. Uh, so I was wondering if I could present, uh, like, I have a PPT, if I could. Uh, yes, uh, yes, please do. Uh, yes, you can. <coughs> There's something called a present button. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you can do it from there. Let me just uh, try to. Uh, please, I apologize for the delay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get it as soon as. It's okay. Yeah. Just uh, click on the present button. I think that the video will come. Uh, yeah. I think it's uh, uh, uploading uh, and processing. It says up uh, processing. Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah. Yes, it is visible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. it's there. So as as yeah. as you can see, uh, that's the title of my paper. Everything is upside down over there. Invention of difference in Amitabh Ghosh's The Shadow Lines. So uh, I will begin uh, with the first half of the title. Everything is upside down over there, uh, which I, is a quote that I have taken from The Shadow Lines, and. Uh, this is in uh, this is uh, you know Tamma, the narrator's grandmother. Uh, she says these uh, you know she says, uh, she while describing her ancestral house in Jindabahar Lane in Dhaka to her grandson, the narrator. Um, uh, you know, in order, when she was describing uh, her childhood, that's when she says this, um, and she uses this word everything is upside down over there upside and uh, to describe uh, her jatha moshai's house uh, now the story behind this upside down house or you know the jatha moshai's portion of their ancestral house is uh, nothing really unique especially in the indian context uh, you know numerous movies numerous stories have been all uh, made up uh, you know have, have been written about made about movies have been made about these uh, this story of uh, you know uh, story in the sense uh, the trope of the rivalry between the two brothers so there was you know the, the idea that there is one big happy family living together and eventually there is a falling out between the two brothers disputes disagreements quarrels uh, you know they turn into property dispute and the result is the division of the ancestral house uh, into you know um, separate uh, houses uh, similarly, in this, uh, in the novel, uh, we, uh, you know, when Tamma talks about her um, uh, childhood days in um, Jinda Baharli in Dhaka, she uh, talks about or, or she describes how uh, their family too, uh, also, uh, you know, their family too, uh, sort of went through a similar process where uh, her father and her father's elder brother, Jatamashai's family, uh, they used to sort of live together, and then there is a falling out. And the result is the creation of uh, uh, two houses instead of the one house. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they sort of um, uh, create or, or sorry, erect a, a wooden wall that partitions uh, their ancestral house. And uh, uh, while the adults in the family really have no difficulty in comprehending this new uh, status of or, or the change of status from uh, family members to rivals. Uh, the children in the family uh, find it extremely difficult to understand this new condition because uh, they were used to being playmates. They were uh, used to doing everything together, eating together, studying together. And then all of a sudden, they are not even allowed to talk to each other, forget about, uh, you know, uh, playing or spending time together. And um, it, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it bothers, uh, you know, the children, especially Thamma, who was at that particular age where she was obviously young, a uh, young girl, still a young girl then, but uh, she was at that age when she was able to understand, partly understand what's going on. 
uh, but not fully understanding the implications of the wooden wall or why uh, you know it needed to go up at all um, <clears throat> and um, the result is that she uh, you know uh, uh, she begins to invent or make up these stories about the ja about jathamushai's portion of the house and uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, you know uh, this is where uh, she sort of uh, uh, you know um, so and, and and she calls that portion of the house the upside down house and uh, you know, as you can see in the slide she says everything is upside down over there they start their meals with uh, the sweets and with dal their books go backwards and end at the beginning they sleep under their beds eat on the sheets cook with their jhatas sweep their sweep with their ladles write with their umbrellas and go walking with the pencils so uh, she sort of creates this uh, you know imaginatively uh, imaginative world which is um, you know uh, opposite where everything is opposite to uh, you know uh, uh, to their familiar world uh, so thamma uh, sort of creates this uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, an alternative world where the familiar rules, the rules of the familiar world were not applicable at all. And, uh, uh, and, and this she had to do in order to justify the erection of that, uh, uh, that uh, wooden wall, which, uh, uh, you know, quite, which, which, which is quite absurd in the way it was sort of erected, going through a couple of doorways, through a lavatory, bisecting an old commode, uh, and basically rendering it all useless. And, uh, you know, uh, this, this reminds me of uh, that uh, poem, Khantaburi um, Didi Shashuri, uh, where Kantaburi Didi Shashuri Pachbun Thakke Kalnai, Shari Gulo Tara Unune Bechai, Hari Gulo Rakhe Alnai, Kono Dosh Pache Dhari Ninduke, Nije Thakke Tara Loha Shinduke, Taka Kori Gulo Hawa Khawe Bole Rekhe Dai Khola Jalnai. So, you know, the idea that uh, everything is opposite. And and that's how uh, she sort of uh, imagines uh, their Jathamoshai's portion of the house. Because, uh, you know, suddenly they are thrown from a familiar world to an unfamiliar mode of existence where a shared common space uh, was no longer accessible a wall was erected separating the two so um, and and though i mean uh, they, obviously none of this was uh, you know uh, of course was happening because uh, you know jatamushai's house was uh, household was probably just as normal as normal or uh, just as you know ordinary as their house but uh, this imaginative difference helped her uh, cope with the uh, with the existence of the, or the erection of this wall, wooden wall, uh, which limited their access to the other portion of the house, um, and and this this I think um, uh, is 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 um, uh, you know it, it it's it, by now it, it, it's clear how, how you know the upside down house uh, therefore becomes a metaphor of the partition where and, and not just the upside down house the entire process you know the rivalry between the one big happy family the the the, the ensuing rivalry between the two families uh, and then the eventual uh, erection of the wall to create two different portions of the ancestral house um, and it becomes a metaphor for the partition and um, you know and and the uh, not just the partition but the the consequences the resulting chaos and the turmoil uh, that results from it and and to a great extent as well uh, the absurdity and the arbitrariness of the process in which it was brought about as well uh, this uh, absurdity and arbitrariness uh, and and you know the the this creation of this uh, 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 you know, this different world, uh, or, uh, you know, even though it is an imaginative, completely imaginative exercise, but nonetheless, a creation of this invented difference uh, brings me to the second part of the title, the invent, invention, inventing difference or invention of difference in, um, the, in the shadow lines. And uh, this sort of brings us to the question of the uh, nation itself, or more uh, specifically, you know, the circumstances, the conditions, or, uh, you know, uh, what uh, sort of the factors that sort of um, give birth to a nation. And uh, uh, interestingly, what uh, one can notice or one will, what, what one will notice is that 
uh, most of the scholars uh, are focused uh, whenever there is an attempt to explain the origin of a nation it, it, you know all of them have sort of uh, sort of acknowledged the difficulty in trying to define a nation because of the varied and the you know the different ways in which the historical factors uh, or what binds them together it's extremely difficult to uh, exactly pinpoint or define uh, exactly what a nation is uh, but nonetheless most of these uh, attempts are focused on what brings a community of people together so what is the point of commonality what is what are the similarities what uh, you know are the points of intersection what are the points of convergence uh, that uh, sort of bring these individuals or bring this uh, brings uh, bring a group of people together uh, and uh, you know uh, that that they want to be a part of a nation right uh, <clears throat> uh, so for example uh, if you if you uh, look at ernest renon uh, Uh, so Ernest Renon, it's what is a nation, and um, he sort of, uh, you know, he categorically goes by different categories. For example, race, language, religion, geographical territory, and he sort of dismisses all of these uh, categories or uh, factors in in saying that this is what brings an, a group of people together to form a nation. And instead, he comes up with a, 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 a little a less tangible or a less, uh, uh, you know, yeah, a, a more tangible, a, a more, yeah, a less tangible idea of the spiritual principle. And uh, he sort of, uh, he describes it or, or he, he sort of, yeah, yeah, he describes it uh, in a way which says that, you know, it's, it's both the spiritual principle is both grounded in the past as well as in the present of a community. So how, how is it uh, you know, located in the past is the collective memory of a heroic past that a group of people inherit. Uh, so you know, something that they can be proud of, the uh, glorious history uh, that they can take pride in. Um, that, or it, it might not always be glorious. It can be a violent history which uh, sort of uh, brings uh, them together. So it's 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 again a collective memory of a past that you know uh, gives a common platform, uh, ties a group of people together, right? Uh, and the other is the present. So how is uh, how is the spiritual principle? Uh, how does it work in the present? Is that it generates a continued consent amongst the individual members or the constituent members to be or uh, to will uh, you know to be willing to be a part of that nation so uh, it is this is how renon sort of uh, you know describes the spiritual principle that it is both uh, you know uh, grounded in the past as well as the present present so it is a, you know a, a, it is a, it is it is both the collective memory that a community inherit uh, inherits and as well as their continued willing consent to be a part of that um, uh, you know nation continue to be a, a part of that nation uh, again so the focus is that one uh, you know the spiritual principle which may be less tangible which may be less obvious but nonetheless it is something that is bringing people together so it is a point of unity uh, yeah a point of commonality or a point of intersection that uh, a place where these people a group of people can meet uh, Ernest Gellner uh, in nationalism in his work nationalism uh, gives a more tangible in that sense um, explanation to um, the existence of a nation or the origin of a nation and he says attributes it to the to a shared culture so i think that's that's more uh, easily understood uh, or understandable where uh, you know things like race language uh, or religion or or something or culture uh, you know traditions uh, something more tangible in that sense uh, is what binds a group of people together uh, so he he sort of um, talks about two hypothetical uh, situations uh, in scenario a he says 
that there may be, uh, you know, he, 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 so he talks about how, uh, so he says that, uh, you know, there are two groups of people uh, with different economic, uh, you know, development. So maybe one community is more economically or financially advanced than the other one. Uh, so there is some kind of economic disparity that exists between the two community, but uh, they have a shared culture. So they, you know, there is some kind of cultural similarity that they share. With, this is scenario one and he talks about another scenario scenario let's let's call it scenario two where again there are two groups of people uh, with economic disparity but what is interesting is uh, they have probably different uh, cultures so culturally they are not similar uh, so you know difference in uh, I mean there isn't any point of similarity in culture between the two groups. So he says that um, despite the economic disparity, it is more likely that the two groups of scenario A, the 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 the, the, the scenario A, this, the, the, the the you know the situation where uh, both the communities have uh, might have the economic disparity, but they have a shared culture, they are more likely to form or constitute one nation. Uh, or, 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 you know, come together as one nation. And he says that the second, in the second scenario, where there is economic disparity between the two communities, but they also have, uh, you know, dissimilarity in culture, that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, th th that those two communities are more likely to, uh, uh, likely to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, become or. Uh, or form two different nations rather than uh, stay together as one nation. So again, uh, the idea is that, uh, you know, what is what is, uh, you know, bringing together a group of people. So for Gellner, it is uh, the shared culture. Uh, <clears throat> uh, any discussion of about the nation nationality would be incomplete without Anderson's, Benedict Anderson's imagined communities. Um, and, uh, he, you know, again, he too is sort of focusing or uh, he's too, he too is focused on uh, what brings uh, a diverse or multiple, uh, you know, groups of people together or individuals together. And, uh, you know, the imagined communities, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a fascinating idea where he says that people... Uh, imagine uh, you know a community uh, uh, people are able to imagine a community with other individuals whom they will probably never meet whom they definitely uh, probably don't know uh, um, and you know they individually or personally they don't know about uh, know them but uh, nonetheless they feel connected to these people and that is what according to uh, you know that that's that's what he describes as uh, you know, imagine uh, a nation. It is an imagined political community, imagined both as inherent, uh, inherently limited and sovereign. So it is a group of people who are able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, who who will again, who will never know each other, who will never meet each other in person, or uh, you know, but but at the same time they uh, are able to uh, feel uh, a connection. Right, and he um, Anderson sort of uh, you know um, attributes it to uh, something he calls the print capitalism, and that started uh, according you know he said he he sort of uh, puts it uh, at the uh, he locates it in the 18th century uh, with technological innovations, specifically the you know the printing press. So uh, one of the ways I mean he talks about he describes many uh, ways in which it sort of uh, you know happened uh, during the 18th century. But one was uh, one interesting way was the reading of the newspaper. So it was like a kind of like a mass ritual that was replicated by thousands of people every day. And um, you know it is it is uh, even today. I mean newspaper we, have, we read the newspapers. Um, everybody has the access to the same kind of information. Uh, we all know that other people are reading about it, but we do not know the uh, you know specific individual identities of all these people who are reading about reading the newspaper. So it kind of uh, generates an awareness that there are other people 
uh, who are, uh, you know, who exist and who have access to the same things, in this case, same kind of information. Uh, we will never need them, but nonetheless, there is a connection. So a sense of simultaneity in that sense is uh, generated. And uh, this, according to Anderson, played a very important role in, um, you know, uh, making it possible to imagine a nation. And uh, this is a significant shift from, say, uh, you know, uh, other categories of uh, similarities like race, language, religion, uh, like uh, Gellner, you know, Gellner, he, 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 think, he sort of, uh, you know, sort of um, ascribes it uh, to the shared culture. So race, language, uh, tangible culture, uh, you know, inheritance in that sense. But um, he, uh, Anderson sort of makes it possible to explain the existence of nations uh, when multiple races, people of multiple races, people speaking different languages, people uh, practicing different religions can co cohabit and, uh, you know, uh, and without without any uh, sort of a shared uh, culture or a shared sim similarity uh, in culture. Um, and yet they, they can live together or they can coexist in, and, and or not just coexist, be a part of uh, a nation and uh, have uh, or, or share uh, the same national identity, and um, and and from there, uh, I would I would like to uh, you know uh, sort of go to the other important keyword in his uh, definition, and that is the the idea of limited. So the nation is imagined as limited so when he talks about imagination uh, or the nation imagining the nation he is not uh, you know he's not uh, uh, talk uh, considering it in as a, as a or he's not suggesting that is lying or or kind of fabrication but uh, it is uh, the possibility or the potential of producing new ways of being or or imagining new ways of being uh, and uh, but nonetheless it is always a nation is always sort of imagined as limited so uh, the moment you put uh, or, or imagine uh, a nation as limited you you assume that there is a boundary and there is a you know there is a limit right and uh, 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 i mean uh, the limits uh, uh, the limits again he he says the limits must can be elastic right but it has to have limits so they can expand or contract depending on uh, you know uh, the historical circumstances forces whichever uh, which is at work at any particular moment of time but uh, the it it has a boundary it has a limit it has a border and uh, the it, it's it's not that the whole of mankind um, you know the whole of mankind cannot uh, form one nation uh, which is interesting because what it essentially means is that uh, you know, beyond the limits of one nation, there are other nations. Uh, and this is interesting because, and, and this is where, uh, you know, the idea of difference sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of gets introduced, uh, where, uh, you know, uh, the idea is that then then the question uh, you know question becomes that who gets included in a nation and who gets excluded so uh, na the membership to a na nation or membership to a nationality uh, therefore is not inclusive in that sense but rather exclusive and what what sort of uh, you know determines who will be included um, in the in a nation and who will be excluded and again that sort of you know plays out into the larger questions of uh, nation and nationality uh, but uh, uh, I would I would like to uh, you know uh, refer to Ernest Gellner again in um, again this is a different um, uh, book of his uh, called Thoughts and Change and here he sort of um, uh, you know uh, introduces a very interesting idea that he said that he yeah he says that uh, it is very advantageous for the formation of one nation it is very advantageous if there is a rival nation so beyond the limits or beyond the boundary or beyond the borders of one nation if there is a 
if one uh, you know if there exists another nation which is perceived as the rival nation um it's sort of uh, 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 it's sort of uh, you know uh, it, 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 it's very in, it becomes pertinent in the existence of that particular nation uh and he says that it it helps immensely if this rival nation has some pre-existing differentiating marks so again he goes back to this idea of the shared culture so he says that it's easier to set uh, you know the other nation as a rival nation if uh, you can see something visible so it could be race it could be language it could be religion but uh, it it always helps if there are some pre-existing you know uh, differentiating marks um, uh, that helps to establish a difference uh and um, anderson when did anderson too uh, you know he refers to the idea of uh, you know the nation uh, requiring an other uh, and and he says in this way it 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 sort of shares or has affinities with racism uh, uh, but nonetheless it's an impo- interesting idea because he says that uh, you know uh, it, it, you need an other uh for the formation of one national identity so there has to be a rival it it helps immensely if there is a rival nation against whom against whose differences you are sort of constructing your own national identity right and this is where i think uh, you know we can come back to the upside down house uh which we began with and uh, this is this is exactly what happens when uh, you know thamma was making up these nonsensical stories of uh, the upside down house uh, so uh, you know uh, when uh, and 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 the idea is that uh, she she uh, keeps on making uh, making up these stories so she says uh, you know i would make up stories about that part of the house and maya grew to like these stories so much that every other night i'd have to make up a new one or she wouldn't go to sleep uh, and so so the idea is that uh, you know just having uh, or defining or describing uh, the uh, you know the the space beyond the border or beyond the boundary as different is not enough uh, but one has to keep adding layers and layers stories and stories uh, sto- you know stories above stories of uh, of 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 differences uh, or generate narratives of difference and it's a continued process just doing it once is not going to be enough but uh, there is a need uh, a sustained effort is required to keep on generating these stories of difference these narratives of difference uh, because then Uh, and and that's this is this is what is very interesting and because he says but you know the strange thing is that as we grew older even i almost came to believe in our story so this this uh, constant repetition this reiteration of these imagined differences these made up stories uh, is required uh, for them to become real for them to take a concrete shape so they are no longer uh you know imagined differences or uh invented differences but they become real and and that's when uh you know the 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 border the wooden wall or the border uh is is justified because then uh it is impossible to uh think of that wall being uh you know taken down or 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 getting rid of the wall because it's different that what lies on the other side of the wall is so different um uh, uh, where uh, every familiarity the familiar world ends so the wall needs to be there to uh, you know keep this this difference alive right uh so uh, so these perceived differences uh, w- uh, and these stories and layers of differences were indispensable in sustaining the myth of the other the rival nation uh, and 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 that uh, sort of uh, you know uh, brings us to why that that uh, you know why, why thamma becomes so confused when she realizes that uh, yeah when she's, she she was she was she will, she will uh, you know she when she realizes that when, if she has to fly from when she flies from calcutta to dhaka uh she'll not be able to see any borders or trenches and uh, that's that's when she asks the very you know pertinent question that if there is no difference 
uh, and uh, if there really is no difference, I mean, you know, uh, then then we are all the same. And if they are all the same, then the borders uh, separating two similar things don't make sense. And uh, it and, and and definitely the violence or the bloodshed that was generated because of those, uh, because of the border or the the boundary line that was drawn, uh, nothing make that doesn't make sense either uh, and 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 uh, this uh, this is this is uh, this is what sort of uh, you know uh, uh, you can you can see how how she gets extremely confused that uh, what was very real a difference in her mind um, and uh, you know uh, but there was no visual um, sort of a representation of that difference or or at least she will not be able to see that visual representation of the difference uh, in the form of a wall or a border or a trench uh, and that's what is very disturbing uh, to her um, you know mind right uh, but while uh, Thamma clings to this idea of the nation yeah uh, uh, yeah, Thamma sort of uh, she she uh, yeah, she she uh, clings to this. She realizes that there are uh, you know uh, chinks in the armor, uh, that uh, it's not a watertight or a foolproof idea, uh, you know, a uh, solid plan or a solid idea in that sense. Uh, but nonetheless, she she sort of uh, clings to this idea of the nation uh, or, or the certainty that sort of uh, comes from this idea of having a nation of having a fixed national identity of uh, uh, the security of the borders right uh, and and you know um, uh, even if it is invented in her head uh, you know in, in the country that she uh, sort of uh, you know uh, Things uh, uh, she takes as her, you know, nation. Um, it it might be an invented country, but uh, nonetheless, it is very very real for her. And uh, you know, this confusion again comes up uh, when she was about to fill up the form for her visa, and she realizes that her birthplace, place of birth, does not sort of uh, coincide with her nationality. And uh, and and she's uh, again this disparity is something that she is not able to reconcile. But nonetheless, I think that sort of pushes her even more to cling on to this idea of borders and nation and nationality and having one fixed national identity, even if that is completely flawed. Uh, contrary to Thamma's line of thinking is uh, Jatha Moshai. So this is the same Jatha Moshai, uh, you know, whose portion of the house uh, Thamma sort of, uh, Thamma described as the upside down house. And uh, she had uh, like she didn't uh, go back to Dhaka long, uh, after like definitely she didn't go back after the partition, and uh, and she had always assumed that Jatha Moshai was and hit the rest of the family uh, like none of them were alive. Uh, but when she comes to know through a mutual acquaintance that Jatha Moshai was still alive and still uh, residing in their uh, ancestral house in Jindabahar Lane. See, she sort of uh, takes it uh, on her, um, you know, on herself to rescue Jatha from her, uh, from his perceived enemies, and uh, uh, you know, and the, the and and she travels uh, with Maya Devi, Tridib, and uh, me, and, and all of them. So, so travel to Dhaka in a rescue mission of sorts to get back Jatha to uh, her invented country. Uh, but uh, what is interesting is the encounter that happens between Thamma and Jatha Moshai. Because, you know, Thamma, like I mentioned before, Thamma had, uh, you know, she, she's aware of the flaws of this idea of the nation, nationality. But none, she, she still uh, clings on to it. She hangs on to it because it gives her a sense of stability. Uh, it gives, gives her a sense of, uh, you know, uh, certainty about herself, her identity, as well as of you know, in the, in the turmoil uh, that uh, was uh, that that sort of the incongruities rather uh, that was the result of the partition. She found that as her you know uh, point of fixity. Jatha Moshai, who uh, uh, like had you know, of course, he was much much older now, and um, he uh, was also senile, um, and and uh, he. 
interestingly, he still held on to the grudge uh, he had against his uh, brother's family. Uh, uh, but uh, what he had was a strange, a very strange clarity about uh, borders and nations and nationality, and especially about their arbitrary and elusive nature, right? Uh, because this is what he says, uh, you know, it was all very well you're going away now, but suppose when you get there and they decide to draw another line somewhere, what will you do then? Where will you move to? No one will have you anywhere. So this, this idea that lines can be drawn and they can be redrawn, you know, Anderson's idea of uh, the, the border, but elasticity of the border, right? It can uh, change, uh, it can contract, it can expand. So uh, there is uh, nothing, um, uh, you know, uh, fixed about uh, the way uh, or, or, you know, or innate about the way the lines are drawn. Um, and and he's aware of this, uh, ar the, 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 this arbitrary as well as the elusive nature of the lines, the shadowy lines in that sense. Uh, and he has sort of completely rejected this idea or this definition of nation. And he has instead located his point of fixity in his place of birth. Right. So he says, you know, I, I as for me, I was born here and I'll die here. So that uh, is something that one cannot change. So, um, you know, he, he, whether it is in which country that the place of birth is doesn't matter to him, uh, whether uh, it has changed his nationality, uh, national identity doesn't matter to him, uh, whether the he's on uh, one side of the border and, uh, you know, which side of the border he's on doesn't matter to him at all. So the one certainty, one point of fixity that he has held on to is uh, his place of birth, unlike Thamma, who, uh, you know, who is who is defining her national identity um, uh, through invented countries. Uh, but what is probably most interesting about the drawing of borders and lines um, uh, is, is uh, something that comes uh, towards the end, almost towards the end of the novel, uh, through the narrator's epiphany. Uh, so he's no longer a child now and he's grown up, he's pursuing his PhD and he was, uh, you know, and that's when he sort of uh, realizes that uh, the irony of the irony of the lines that are drawn. Uh, so, uh, and, and this is uh, where he says that, you know, the, contrary to expectations, uh, so, you know, he says that the two bits of land would sail away from each other. So that was the expectation, perhaps. But contrary to the expectations, what happens is the reverse. So, you know, Dhaka and Calcutta were more closely bound to each other than after uh, they had drawn their lines. Uh, uh, so, so closely that I in Calcutta had only to look into the mirror to be in Dhaka a moment when each city was the inverted image of the other, locked into an irreversible symmetry by the line that was to set us free. And this is this is very, uh, again, very interesting because, uh, uh, you know, so what he realizes is that the drawing of the line, the line separating the two countries has in fact, instead of separating them or, uh, you know, uh, rendering them apart has locked them together forever, uh, their destinies uh, intertwined inextricably. And the reason is that because they need the other. So both the countries need the other in order to define their existence, right? Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, uh, they are locked, uh, they, are, they are inverted images uh, of each other, uh, you know, there is a strange symmetry, but nonetheless, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 sorry, strange, yeah, so symmetry, not similarity, symmetry, uh, but nonetheless inverted. And there is literally no escaping each other because uh, to define one nation, the other is required. Exactly what, uh, you know, uh, Gellner was saying that you need the rival nation. You need uh, the other uh, the nation, which is different, which um, about whom you can generate Narish, uh, narratives of difference and uh, interestingly in the if you if, if, if in the absence of differences these 
differences have to be, these narratives have to be invented, just like, uh, say, Tamma did, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, while inventing the stories about, uh, you know, the upside down house. So uh, what we can say, therefore, is that uh, for the continued existence or relevance of a nation, uh, there is also an indispensable need for the continued generation of the myth of difference. So for a nation to exist, you need uh, other nations and these other nations also need to be different. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, these, 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 uh, uh, whether these differences are pre-existing or fabricated or uh, somewhere between the two, you know, where layers of layers, layers and layers of uh, invented stories are added, uh, doesn't matter. But there needs to be a, a, a narrative of difference that needs to be continually, uh, you know, generated in order to uh, uh, sustain the relevance of one particular nation. Again, so the self and the other locked in an, um, you know, in an embrace, because that's how uh, they are defining each other. So, uh, you know, I think the novel, therefore, uh, uh, suggests something very interesting. Therefore, you know, it, it's not, therefore, uh, the birth of a nation um, is not always about finding points of similarity uh, or, or points of convergences in a community. Uh, it is as much about defining uh, differences of one community from another and uh, what it, uh, and it, it takes it one step further, I think, uh, where it suggests that in the absence of these necessary differences, they have to imagine and invented. And that's, that's, that's what, uh, you know, forms a nation. Um, and, and I mean, in order to keep up the wall, the, to keep up the relevance of the, of the boundaries of the borders, it is necessary to generate or invent narratives of difference. And that's what, um, you know, sustains the relevance of a nation in, in, in its turn. Uh, that's that's all I have to say for now. Um, I look forward to your questions, observations, and suggestions. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Shuravi Roy. Thanks a lot for this wonderful lecture. Uh, now it is the time for question and answer. The floor is open to all. Sorry, I cannot hear. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, now it is the time for question and answer. Uh, the floor is open to all. Uh, can you see the question? Is is it visible in the on the screen? Yes. Yes. Should I? Uh, yes. 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 Definitely. Yes. Definitely. That's that's uh, part of the uh, Shabana. Your your. Thank you for the question. Um, since the house gets divided between the exact can the jatha Moshe is part of the exactly so that's 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 part of the argument that i'm making in the uh, you know the lecture so far that it is constructed as the other realm right because it needs to be the other uh, because without the other there is no justification for the wooden wall uh, why is it there why is uh, you know initially the children had access to the whole house and then all of a sudden they do not have access to a part of the house uh, and a, a visible wooden wall is constructed uh, which separates uh, or which limits their movement uh, and and all of a sudden they cannot comprehend why they are not allowed to uh, you know uh, freely move around and uh, and and in to justify the wooden wall in their minds at least at least for Tamma, at least that's what she does she creates it as the other realm she uh, constructs it as an alternative world as a as a world where uh, she has to right because otherwise the the wall doesn't make sense at all so that's why she constructs it as the other realm other which is absolutely different where everything is opposite everything um, is inverse to where the rules of the familiar world does not apply at all okay uh, i hope that answers your question Yeah, I think that does. I mean, like if other faculty members have questions, if you could please put them. 
Kumar Habib. Manushree, I think we can. Yes, I think there are no more questions left. So, uh, can we uh, go for the vote of thanks now? Uh, I invite Dr. Madhumita Mojumdar, our head of the department, to give the vote of thanks. Please, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Manushree. It was, of course, uh, needless to say, a very uh, enchanting lecture, I would say, by Shurubhi, uh, bringing out, you know, the two very important aspects of the, uh, you know, nation, nation as a space, a geographical space, as well as the imagined space, you know, how we create that sense of other. And of course, you know, um, I think, you know, today when we talk this, uh, this novel, of course, uh, pub was published, I think, sometime around 1988. Uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, you know, the, the perception of home changing. And of course, you know, this, this uh, novel, which talks about, you know, in a, in a very led sense, you know, where uh, the after effect of partition where let's say uh, you know you have to build your uh, idea of home I mean like that that becomes uh, important because you get displaced and of course the second uh, or the third generation has a different uh, vision of what home or what nation ought to be whereas uh, for you know uh, characters like you know Tamma or uh, Jatha Moshai and others, for them, this is, you know, uh, you know, they are perhaps at the crux of history, where they are perhaps, you know, being um, told in and perhaps in no uncertain terms that they have to now talk about a different geographical space as their own nation. So, you know, this very complicated idea of a nation today, perhaps, uh, you know, when you have not been uprooted from what you call the comfort of a nation or the belief of a nation, perhaps, you know, these questions uh, become very important uh, for you to understand. I think an Amitabh Ghosh uh, uh, happens to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, I think the precursor of that kind of writing where he uh, really uh, brings out very visible, uh, you know, fractures, you know, talking about this wooden partition that, that you know, suddenly divides a house and you no longer have access, you know, this, uh, you know, the, the, the access being limited, you know, suddenly by uh, not only by boundaries of uh, political uh, uh, sensibilities, but also uh, by, you know, certain uh, emotional uh, trajectories that we, you know, are conforming to. On one hand, you know, there is a defiance against this uh, uh, idea of, you know, being politically uh, forced into a space of separation. On the other hand, you know, there is an indulgence, indulgence on a very personal level where you are talking about dividing a house. Okay, so these are very, uh, uh, I would believe, you know, just not problematic, you know, these are perhaps what sets you to thinking, you know, these are very um, led emotional uh, structures, like, you know, when we talk about nation, we talk about, you know, um, home, we, we talk about them in very, you know, in, in a very normal fluid term. But then what comes with them, you know, perhaps if you delve deep, deep into it, you will realize there are so many fractures that are built. And, you know, of course, there, there, there are not always external forces which are doing that to us. You know, perhaps we are doing this to ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, Amitabha Ghosh brings that out. And thank you, Shurabhi, for not only pointing that out, you know, but taking us to that elaborate journey, especially, you know, the textual part of it is something that I absolutely enjoyed, you know, where you do have, you know, uh, the narrator. Because, you know, I think uh, what you narrate is also affecting the process of the idea of nation. And there are this double narrative, whereas Amitabh Ghosh, as somebody who is a researcher, you know, uh, looking at, you know, what could be the, uh, you know, the, 
the effect of these memoirs would be the effect of these memories. And of course, on one hand, there is a kind of a first person narrative where there are speakers, you know, who are perhaps not able to completely define and completely uh, give reason to why things are happening. So, you know, this, 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 uh, Tussle, I think, is very important for us as readers, you know, to understand. I think that uh, uh, is exactly the intent, I think, of such texts, you know, uh, you know, and especially if you look at the history of uh, Shahit Academy Awards, you know, if you look at, you know, the early texts on partitions, and then you have uh, Chaman Nahal, then you have uh, Tamas, and then, of course, Amitabha Ghosh's, it, it, it just keeps on, you know, perhaps the physical pain keeps on reducing, but what yes. remains are the mental fractures and, you know, and the deep rooted, you know, the inability, you know, perhaps uh, to accept a very conformed idea of home to begin with. And of course, nation comes uh, much later. I think especially as Bengalis, I think, you know, this this layering is uh, perhaps, you know, you, you, you perhaps only with the Bengalis, you would have something which is called the Probashi Bangali. You know, you don't apply the term to any other uh, community. I think this has because of the kind of legacy and the memories that we build, you know, and of course, as you very important, so the imagined, you know, uh, memories, which are very important. So thank you, Shurabi, for that wonderful lecture. I think, you know, not only us in the department, but I think, you know, my students across, you know, I was, you know, of course, in conversation with them. I think uh, they have thoroughly enjoyed it. So thank you for, you know, thank bringing you. it out in such a conscience and in such a, you know, thoughtful manner. So thank you so much. And it was a pleasure having you in the department. I would uh, now take this opportunity to thank uh, her Vice Chancellor, Ma'am, uh, Shoma Bondopadhyay. She is, of course, the architect behind, you know, uh, the, the kind of uh, thought that we inculcate in our academic uh, endeavors. I would like to thank our Register, Sir, uh, uh, Sahidur Rahman sir, you know, he is also, you know, uh, you know, very encouraging of, you know, whatever we undertake. So uh, I would uh, thank sir. I would thank, you know, Professor Oparajita Hajra, uh, who is not only the professor in the department, but she's also Dean Faculty of Arts. And uh, Professor Hajra is somebody, I think, you know, who's very enthusiastic about you know the new approaches that we try and take in the department you know our experiments you know of course are much aided because of the kind of support that she has uh, given to us i would like to thank uh, my other colleagues in the department dr habib suban uh, kumar aditya shwarkar maloshri mandu uh, you know for being there you know we, we we are able to conduct this kind of lecture series because of you know a kind of a togetherness that that of yeah. course the department share shares uh, today uh, dr uh, oporna singh and dr Indrila kosh couldn't make it uh, to this particular lecture but of course they're always there with all the endeavors uh, that this department makes so thank you for being with us and not uh, the last and uh, but you know the most important for whom we can conduct this lecture series is our students, our MPhil scholars, our PhD scholars, our students from the PG section and even UG section have joined this and, you know, and they have thoroughly enjoyed this very fluid and very lucid lecture. So uh, thank you, Shurobi. And I hope in future we continue with this interaction and we'll, we will have you for many more lectures to, um, you know, in future. And this interaction is just the beginning. We, uh, we hopefully understand that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I'm ending the...